Hey everyone, if you've been checking recent patch notes, you would have seen a few changes that are going to be impacting PvP. In this video, we're going to be breaking down these changes, giving you our opinions on them, and discussing how they affect the meta. Welcome to Hotfix Review. First up on the agenda is Gladiator Spite. Spite over the last few weeks has been all over the place. Nerfed once, then nerfed again, and then apparently it's a bug and now reverted. So what's happened with Spite? Well, first is the nerf that stuck. Gladiator Spite will now keep enemies hit in combat for the full duration of its effect. We've all been there or seen it happen. Spite can result in even the most stacked on versatility players getting one shot like a critter. So what does this change mean? Well, this only affects rogues as now you can no longer just sap somebody three times inside of Spite, and you can't also just blind somebody and then follow up with sap. While this might not seem like a huge deal, rogues were the worst offenders of Spite due to this. And what this change does is allows for much more counterplay when it comes to Spite when facing rogues in general. Now, in order to get a big Spite setup, they're going to have to instead land polymorphs, something which can be dispelled or interrupted, allowing for far more counterplay. The other change that we saw in the patch notes to Spite was that it can once again stack when multiple Spites are thrown on one target, and this is actually a bug fix. When the nerf was added in the last build, they made it so Spites couldn't stack anymore, so this just enables them to stack once again. Overall though, Spite is still obviously going to be very good, but allowing for more counterplay is a step in the right direction. Should it have been nerfed harder? I'm not too sure. Maybe a change to how quickly it stacks or a lower cap on the stacks could have been a step in the right direction. Spite may be a necessary evil though due to the high amount of versatility stacking that we're seeing on the ladder and competitive play to speed up games. Let us know what you think in the comments below. The biggest change in this round of hot fixes are the bug fixes and nerfs to the Conflict and Strife Major Essence. Let's first discuss the bug fix. So you've probably heard about this and seen its effect on the meta firsthand. In recent cups and tournament play, we saw the rise of jungle and warrior compositions and the decline of rogues. This is down to these classes not proccing the double damage reduction portion of Conflict and Strife on their stuns. We at Skillcap did some testing, and the stuns that previously did not work were from the classes that were doing well in the meta, so warriors, hunters, and ferals mainly. With this hotfix Blizzard is proposing, it means that now all stuns are going to be working correctly with Conflict and Strife Major, which is obviously a much needed bug fix. The second change that we're seeing to Conflict and Strife is a nerf to damage reduction gained while stunned. How this would work beforehand was that when you were a victim of a stun, the damage reduction portion of your versatility would be increased by 100%. This is now being cut in half. We're not completely sure how this is going to affect the meta this early, but what this will do is bring compositions like Jungle Cleave or Warrior Mage, in which we've seen uprisings of in-tournament play, down a peg as these compositions were heavy abusers of the Conflict and Strife bug. Not to mention the fact that Conflict is now half as good defensively as it was before means that it's going to once again be a lot easier to kill targets while they're locked down inside of a stun. To be honest, I don't think it's healthy for the game if you're actively making it harder to kill somebody by stunning them. We'll also be sure to check the proposed bug fix out after it happens to make sure all the stuns now work correctly, and we'll keep you updated on how these Conflict and Strife changes affect the meta. On top of the nerfs to Conflict and Strife, we also saw some changes to the Corruption Versatile. First of all, let me start by saying that this is a nerf to the Corruption, not the stat itself like some people are getting confused about. Now, when engaged in PvP combat, all your Versatiles will be 33% less effective, which now results in a Versatile 3, which was 12% increased versatility, dropping down to 8%. Doing some quick math, Zot has a total of 51.55% versatility on his retail character without any other buffs. Gaining 2,739 from gear with his 5 versatile 3s, giving him an additional 1,643 versatility. Now, after the 33% nerf, he'll lose a total of 542 verse. To put this into perspective, 85 verse is 1% damage increase and 0.5 damage reduction. So, in my gear, I'm looking after the nerf to take just over 3% more damage before any third-party versatility buffs. So, you can see how minuscule this nerf actually is. Of course, the more versatile you gain, the more net versatility you're going to be losing. So, the big question, is this nerf going to affect anything? Well, simply put, no, it's not. Classes that still stack versatility and play with versatile right now will still want to do so, so you doomsayers can relax. Although classes like DK, Rogue, DH, and even Warlock may look to go for higher damage options in Gushing Wound or Mastery Amp, depending on the matchup and if you're the target or not, bringing a lot more variety. Versatile, though, will still remain to be the best all-around corruption in PvP, as running without high amounts of versatility if you're not a class who can get away with it will just mean certain death. The big picture here is that Blizzard and most people are missing is that nothing is going to ever compare to versatility stacking and versatile due to the power of conflict and strife and just how good of a stat versatility is when it comes to PvP. Not to mention how easy it is to gain versatility when compared to other stats from essences, trinkets, and just PvP gear in general. 
So, even with the nerfs to the corruption and conflict and strife, rest assured versatility stacking and conflict major are still going to be very good options, but just now not make you completely immortal while stunned. As for effect on the meta, this will help to speed up games a lot which is great, whilst more than likely bringing Rogue Mage back into the forefront of the metagame which, depending on your class, is either good or bad news. If you're still unsure on what your class should be stacking corruption-wise after these changes, then we'll be releasing a video in the next few days to clear it up and give you all the information you need. The next big change that we've seen is a nerf to Reaping Flames. As we know, Reaping Flames is the Breath of the Dying major essence, and when used on a target above 80% or below 20%, will reset to a 15 second CD. The rank 3 portion of this essence though, further buffs this and if used as a final blow to kill a target, will reduce its cooldown to 5 seconds and also buff the damage by 100%. This meant picking up Breath of the Dying against classes with a pet could give you a huge advantage while putting the pet classes lower on the food chain. The class that suffered the most from this was Unholy DK with their pets being easily targeted and having very low health, giving you the ability to consistently get big Reaping Flames. This change now makes it so the cooldown reset and increased damage portion will no longer work on any form of pet from a player, resulting in a small buff to Warlocks, Death Knights, Frost Mages, and Hunters, while making CNS even more desirable as a major, further again pushing versatility stacking. Last but not least, we've got some small tuning to Miss Weaver Monks, with Chrysalis now reducing the cooldown of Life Cocoon by 25 seconds, down from 45. If you've been playing Arena or watching competitive play, you would have noticed a large portion of compositions have a Mist Weaver in them. Mist Weavers saw some big buffs at the start of patch 8.3, including buffs to most of their healing as well as the change to Life Cocoon, meaning that it now scales from the monk's health. As we move further into the season, monks are gaining more and more passive health, and as a result, their cocoons are getting bigger and bigger, being upwards of a 400k absorb. Thanks to the Azerite trait, Burst of Life, and the talent Chrysalis, the cooldown of Cocoon can be reduced down to 55 seconds. So essentially, you have an immunity on a 55 second cooldown, which is a little absurd. Thanks to this nerf though, Life Cocoon is now up to a 75 second cooldown. Do we think this will change much? Not really. Miss Weavers will still remain and continue to be the best healer in the game, just maybe now they won't be able to throw Cocoon so liberally, and you'll have a little more opportunity to score kills while this powerful cooldown is down. Alright, we here at Skillcap put a ton of work into keeping you updated on how to play and play around every class in the World of Warcraft arena. The best way for you to show your support and love for the channel, as well as remaining up to date on any shifts in the meta as they happen, is to like, subscribe, and share the video. Remember, the content you find here on YouTube is just a taste of the hyper-improvement platform that you'll find on our website. If you're serious about pushing arena rating and want to improve, be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.